again, it's only me. Welcome to another week of art video where I film all the arty things I get up to in a week and pop them all together into this video. This week I was up to a lot. It's been a very busy, kind of it was a little bit stressful as well week. But I started the week with quite a nice little task of putting together all my little collages. If you've watched my last two week of art videos, you'll recognise a lot of these collages. I started this big collage project where I wanted to put all these little collages together, kind of like a bit of a jigsaw where they all slot into each other um, and all the collages are inspired by a holiday I went on so I finally got to put them all into the frame and I'm really happy with how it turned out I'm super pleased with that it looks very cute in my room I'm going to take it to uni with me to decorate my uni room so it's just kind of sitting in my room for now that was nice to do Here I am just packing an order, it was one of the biggest orders I've ever got really, I couldn't believe how many prints this person ordered so thank you very much to that to that one person. Anyway whilst I'm packing this order I'll talk you through what I'm up to this week, I'm doing a very big painting in this video, uh, it was my most ambitious watercolour painting that I've ever done. Throughout this video you'll see the planning stages from thumbnail to figuring out the colours on photoshop to doing the entire painting from start to finish also with a bit of life sprinkled in between. Usually I like my week of art videos to include lots of different art projects but this week it's just the one big art project so I hope you enjoy. breath right now because I've just had the blooming fright of my life. There was a squirrel, squirrel, squirrel in our house. I'm all, I'm all flustered but I'm gonna get this filming done. The squirrel is fine, it's left the house but it smashed a pot. It, it was in the living room like f fumbling all over the blinds. Anyway, <laughs> squirrel has now left the house and I'm gonna show you the work which I have been doing today. Here's my sketchbook. Um, I've been doing some little thumbnail sketches because I've got a big plan this week to paint something for my boyfriend's birthday. Um, this is unrelated, this is from a different project, um, but these are, I mean, this is just the scribbliest thing ever, but to me it makes sense. So I did these two very quick thumbnails and then just a little bit of sketching. Basically what I want to do is paint, he's into Warhammer, so I'll pop some stuff up on screen right now so you know what I'm talking about. He paints these models and he has this dragon which he's really proud of and it took him like an entire year to paint, it's absolutely amazing. So I want to do something, um, a painting with that dragon. I just did some quick sketches of bits of the dragon. Just, here's a better version of what I was doing. This is for my last bead painting. As you can see I do thumbnails and then I do like a little bit just idea generation and then that turns into kind of a little bit of a more detailed sketch which turns into the kind of finished sketch which I use for the final painting. So that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. So I've done these very quick thumbnails and then from that I did this a more refined sketch. It still is very messy and I still have lots of stuff to figure out um, but it gives me a pretty good understanding of what I need to do for the next stage which is to draw the final sketch. That's something I want to get doing now and I will get going and also try to calm down from um, the whole shock of the, the being a squirrel in the house. <laughs> Here I am with the mammoth task of doing the final sketch. I was quite overwhelmed when I was doing this just because the dragon is blooming detailed it is. I did think about maybe drawing the dragon in a different position to what he actually is posed in on the model but then I thought you know this, this painting's going to be hard enough as it is. I don't really have the knowledge of dragon anatomy to rearrange this dragon into a different position. I quite like the pose it was already in so that worked out well. Uh, you're trying to draw the dragon and all of its detail bits and bobs but also do it in my style which is a little bit more simplified was a challenge but I think I got there in the end. Here's a little Pinterest board that I was using for inspiration because when it came to like the architecture of the towers I just had no idea where to even start so I typed into Pinterest and wizard architecture to try and learn a bit about that. Uh, learned that there very wonky and very top heavy with lots of spikes so that's what I went for with all my architecture. For the background I wanted to kind of make it up completely so the whole background's made up um, just from my head because I want to stop relying so heavily on um, uh, reference pictures and just use my imagination a bit more so this was really pushing my brain power here 
Also, perspective is hard and I'm sure someone who understands perspective a lot more will look at this painting and think, yikes, the perspective of those towers is, is not the best. Um, but for me and my untrained perspective eye, I think it looks all right and passable as like a realistic looking environment. Took me an entire day to do that sketch, but I was really happy with the outcome. Moving on to Wednesday now, I spent the entire day on Photoshop figuring out the colour scheme for this painting. I took a picture of the sketch and took it into Photoshop and set it to multiply so it goes see through so you can like add the colour but you can still see the lines on top um, and I was just figuring out the colour palette. I knew um, I needed something that like colours that would go nicely with the way that Oscar painted the dragon because you know ultimately this is a p painting of his dragon so I wanted to keep the colours the same you know like true to his model the dragon that he painted he made it very warm toned i think the original dragon like on the box is a lot more gray but he kind of switched it up and made it you know a lot more warm so to go along with the warm color scheme i thought a sunset would go really nice so i knew i wanted the sky to be really orange and yellowy uh with like the the sun on the sword to make it like the focal point because like the brightest part of the painting and then for the rest of it i knew i needed colors that went nicely with the nice warm sunset so I thought I'd stick to very sort of warm earthy greens but then I didn't want it to be too warm so I knew I also needed like a cool colour to go alongside that so it wasn't all just too warm for kind of like the the down the, the down bits of the painting that doesn't make sense the bits which aren't on the cliff like the valley I suppose in the landscape I kept that kind of like a bluish green just so it would contrast with the more warmer tones and that was my thinking this took a very long time and a lot of trial and error to get colors which worked well together but in the end I think it works and I did probably go into a little bit too much detail for something is just which is just you know figure out the colors but sometimes I just can't help myself this was the plan I was really happy with it and it made um, doing the actual painting a lot more of a smooth process because I'd already done a lot of the, the hard work and a lot of the big decisions. Meanwhile, whilst all this painting was going on, I was still doing a lot of shop stuff. I don't know how I managed to squeeze it all in, but somehow I got it done. Still packing orders and doing all my thank you notes and keeping things, you know, running with my Etsy shop. Okay, so the planning process is now complete. I finished this uh, this morning. I know I did go into a little bit too much detail for something which is supposed to be just to figure out the colours, but you know, sometimes I just can't help myself. I went on into quite a lot of detail on the dragon, but then like there are parts like, look how messy that is, that's like zero detail. But that gives me a, a very good understanding of what the final piece will look like. So hopefully now when I'm actually painting it, it should be smooth sailing, it should be just kind of copying what I've already done because I basically have to make zero decisions now because the decisions have already been made. I'm painting it very big, this is my biggest painting um, yeah, well biggest like illustration painting. I did some really big portraits back in the day in A-level art But um, this is like my biggest like illustration Cartoony sort of thing. This was the focus focus. This was the first sketch that I did I ended up going back in and adding um, a little set of wizard towers over here just because it needed something but what I ended up doing as well on the final piece was um 
flipping the dragon round so he was facing the other direction um, just because I thought that looked a little bit better in the composition and then I um, traced all that I'll show you what I was tracing from and this very um, grey <laughs> image here of the line work as you can see it's a bit messy looking because obviously I've just like um, like flipped the dragon round and I also added on these houses here um, so yeah, now I have this on this big sheet of A3 watercolour paper. I was umming and ahhing whether to go for A3 or A4, but ultimately I decided for A3 just because there's so much detail. I was thinking if I did it any smaller, doing like these, like the faces on the dragons would be really hard, um, just because they're so small. Uh, so I thought I'd just do it slightly bigger to make it hopefully a little bit easier for myself even though it is bigger and it will be more work I'm hoping because it, it gives me more room to work it will be a little bit easier plus I went to Ikea yesterday and you can see I got two two different sizes of frames because I still was unsure what size I'd go for so I bought both just to be safe uh, so I'm going to go for the A3 size what I'm doing it in is watercolours I have a little trolley full of my art things at the side here. Um, these are my watercolours. They are by the brand, can you see it? Windsor and & Newton. And they look like this. They are very old. Um, the set comes with um, this chunk here. And then these are all the ones that I have separately that I've just acquired over the years. Okie doke then. Let's get painting. <laughs> can you tell I'm procrastinating? I'm nervous. All right, I'm gonna go. Starting the actual painting, dun dun dun, uh, scary stuff, well I don't know, not really because I kind of already figured everything out like I said, so it made what could have been quite a scary and daunting task, not so daunting because a lot of the hard work had already been done. Also when I'm doing paintings like this it can get quite overwhelming thinking for me like I've got a lot to do to get this painting to be finished, um, but it's just kind of focusing it on it in little bits and thinking right, now I'm just going to work on the sky and then I'm going to work on this and then I'm going to, you know, just build colours. If you look at it as one giant thing, it can get a bit overwhelming, but if you just think, oh, you know, the only task I have to do right now is paint this one little face, um, it doesn't seem as daunting. Usually when I'm doing watercolour paintings especially, my number one rule is do the painting as a whole so you can see the painting coming together as one big piece instead of bit by bit but for this I kind of threw that rule out the window because it was such a big painting with so many little details I was just like you know what if I paint this thing as a whole and do everything at the same time I'm gonna get so overwhelmed and a little bit confused so I just broke it down into little bits so I said to myself right we'll start with the sky get that done then we'll paint the dragon fully and then I'll work on like this section of the cliff and then this section of the cliff and usually I don't do that because I like to see um, and like I said, the painting coming together as one big piece because sometimes if you paint it bit by bit, it feels a little bit disjointed. Um, but because I'd already figured everything out, like I've mentioned many times, <laughs> did you know, did you know that I'd already figured everything out? I don't know if I've mentioned it. Um, but because I've already done all that work, I knew the painting would come together. As long as the painting looked like the colour little study thing that I did, um, it would work because, you know, I'd already put in all the work and decided everything. So that's what I did. With watercolours, I work um from very very light washes and slowly like build up the colors you can see everything's very pale at the beginning and i just very gradually add bits on top um i like to i've been doing a lot more recently which i never really used to do that much is a technique called wet on wet um which for all non watercolor people it basically means um you put the paint down onto the paper when the paper's already wet and it creates it like the the paint kind of Mm, we don't know the word to use kind of spreads out and they'll kind of mix into each other um which i always think looks quite nice so i started trying to do that a bit more and just letting that kind of show through in the final piece rather than refining every single little bit i'm um, allowing the paint to kind of do its own thing a little bit i mean sometimes um i do I'll put a bit too much detail into things and overwork areas and that's something that I need to work on but I do like to leave little bits kind of a little bit unfinished where you can see the paint um, you know doing what paint does <laughs> and like mixing and merging into each other and that's something which I want to include into my paintings a lot more often that's all I'm going to say for now <laughs> I'll speak to you in a little bit
bit of uh, real time speaking now. I've done as much as I possibly can on this painting. I did a little bit more on the bottom there. I'm going to leave this painting here for the next few days because I'm off we're off um, away for the weekend, we're going to York with his family um, for his like a little birthday weekend um, so I'm going to leave this painting here and work on it when I get back I'm really happy with how it's coming along though, I've really liked the way I did the dragon I'm going to go in once I've done all the painting um, with coloured pencil um, and add highlights to bits and like just go over little bits with lines to refine a few areas and kind of add a little bit more detail and I might even go over a few parts with um, like gouache because they have white gouache which I can like add highlights to things with but I reckon another two days work maybe one full day I'll be able to get this done and I will return after I've come back from a holiday to finish this painting <laughs> I had a very lovely long bank holiday weekend up in York, uh, lots of fun as you can see from my little uh, holiday video, <laughs> um, but enough fun, back to work. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend's birthday was, we came back off holiday Tuesday morning and his birthday was on Wednesday, so it was, uh, what's that saying, where you need to just get to work real quick, I forgot it, but imagine I've just said it. <laughs> Um, it was all guns blazing, no I don't know, there's some sort of saying, anyway I was just like right gotta get your head in the game and just get this painting done so as soon as I got home I was just like boom start painting and I painted from probably about 11 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night <laughs> so a full 12 hours, well I don't know probably had tea and a little bit of food in between um, but 
it was a long day of painting is what I'm trying to say. I came back off holiday and I had the dragon painted and a, a very tiny bit of the background painted and like the first sort of layer of the sky done so I had a lot to do. I didn't film much of it because like I said I just needed to get this thing done um, and setting up the camera and doing all that sort of stuff you know does take a lot of time so I did most I finished most of the painting like the painting part of the painting <laughs> the painting part of the painting I did that most of that off camera but then I did film quite a bit of the colored pencil part so I just use my colored pencils once I've kind of done everything I want to do with the watercolors I use my colored pencils which are by the brand Faber-Castell and the watercolors I use are by the brand Winsor Newton I think I've already said that but I'll say it again <laughs> Um, anyway, I use the colour pencils just to um, add lines where lines are needed because sometimes an area just needs to be defined and a pen colour pencil is just like really easy to do that and also just add a little bit of detail and a little bit more saturation to certain areas. I don't add it everywhere and I don't like to do lines everywhere, I like to only add lines where they're really needed um, but that's what, that's what I do with the coloured pencils. I did manage to get this painting done for his birthday because I was a bit worried that I just wouldn't get it done in time but luckily um, because I did work so hard on the Tuesday when I came home it was basically like 80% done nah probably like 95% done on the Wednesday so I just woke up nice bright and early and started getting drawing so it was ready for in the afternoon to give him on his birthday and I was dead happy I could actually give it him on his birthday because I was really worried that it would have to be a late present um, and he was really happy with it it did put a big smile on his face it did and it really surprised him he knew I was doing a painting for him but he had no idea what of um, and for some reason he thought I was doing a painting of him because <laughs> he just gotten that into his head so this was quite the surprise um, and he really likes it because uh, it's his favourite model and he's really into Warhammer up there with one of my finest birthday presents that I've ever given I've said to him don't be expecting this every year this is um, this is kind of a one time thing <laughs> I've kind of set the bar very high really haven't I um, anyway this is a finished painting and it's also the end of the video I hope you've enjoyed the video I know the art has been very different to what I usually do dragons not really something I draw very often I usually draw flowers and nice pretty landscapes and fruit. <laughs> so Dragons was very different but I hope you enjoyed watching me go a little bit outside of my comfort zone with this painting and all the other little things I did this week. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, my shop, my Etsy shop is linked in the description along with my Instagram if you want to have a nosy. Um, if you like this video why not like it, press that button and maybe subscribe if you're not already. Hope you have a nice week and I'll see you soon.